This is a 55 inch LG C1 OLED and that is obviously a PS5 which I understand is quite difficult to get. Fortunately I have two and in the first instance what I wanted to do is to factory reset this LG C1 so that you will know what to do out of the box to pair it up with the Sony PS5. So if we go on to the general sub menu, click on system and then reset to initial settings. Now I'm slightly sad because you know I'm going to be losing all the number of hours I've spent 3D LUT calibrating this TV using Kalman. You know I'm going to lose all of those calibrations but you know it is a sacrifice that I'm willing to make you know to generate more YouTube views and make some dosh from this channel. And while waiting for the factory reset to complete, I wanted to say that I've been testing and measuring and calibrating this TV using a calorimetry research CR100 calorimeter profile to a CR250 spectral radiometer. I also use an external signal generator, the excellent Meridio 7G, and you can look up the cost of all these devices. I'm also a former professional calibrator turned YouTuber. And the reason why I'm saying all this is because you know I want you to trust me rather than a 14 year old on Reddit with a username of Xbox Sucks 42667 Sucks with an X. And if I can press the OK button on the remote control, click on TV, and then exit first use, and power up the PS5. And naturally, I have to switch to the HDMI input to which the console is connected. And you can see that with the latest system software update on the PS5 and also the latest firmware update on the C1, the TV will be detecting the console and therefore it will default to game optimizer mode correctly. But what I wanted to do is to first go into the home screen of the PS5 and then let me try and you know select an SDR game which is Fortnite and the reason why I do that is because you know I wanted to show you for some reason the TV treats SDR and HDR games from the PS5 differently and you can see here if we play an SDR game Fortnite, then for some reason it goes to the default out of the box picture preset which is eco and let me first go into support and go into energy saving and turn energy saving step off because you know the last thing we want is for the tv to constantly adjust the light output depending on the ambient light that is detected by the light sensor on the tv that will you know degrade the picture accuracy and once you turn it off, the next thing that I wanted to do is to actually engage PC mode on the TV. And this has a couple of advantages, but before I go into that, I wanted to just show you how to do it. So the first thing you do is to press the input source button on the Magic Remote, and then click on Home Dashboard. And then if you can click on this three dot icon here, and then click on Edit, Edit Inputs and then click on this icon here and change it to PC. Click on save and this will engage PC mode. Now in PC mode, the reason why I like it so much on the LG C1 OLED is twofold. Firstly, it allows for a full 444 chroma. And secondly, from my testing, not only on the C1 OLED, but also on the G1 OLED, if you engage PC mode, for 4K 120 frames per second HDR games, it will reduce the amount of posterization not only in games but also according to test patterns. And on the latest firmware of 3.15.27, I'll just show you on this TV. This video is sponsored by Omaze. Omaze gives away one-of-a-kind prizes and experiences while donating money to chosen charities all across the world. And until the 17th of September 2021, Omaze is giving away $20,000 to build your dream PC. You can either use the money to buy an entirely new rig, or if you are more hands-on like me, you can choose to build your own from the ground up. With $20,000, you can basically treat yourself to a top-of-the-line monitor, headset or graphics card, assuming you can get your hands on one, of course. 
If you're not a gamer, you can also use the money to build a powerful PC for video editing, perhaps with an OLED monitor to go with it too. Should you choose to donate and enter for the chance to win $20,000 to build the ultimate PC, your donation will support the School on Wheels charity, whose volunteers provide free tutoring and mentoring to students experiencing homelessness in Southern California. To potentially win $20,000 and support a great cause, visit omaze.com forward slash HTTV test. Thank you for your support. I've installed the latest firmware of 3.15.27, you can see that with input lag, there is no change in PC board as long as it's a lag game optimizer compared to outside PC board, so that is always good. And what I'm going to do in the first instance is to select game optimizer mode, obviously, and if we can go to game optimizer mode, this will allow us to achieve the lowest input lag even inside PC mode. And then we can click on advanced settings with brightness. For SDR games, I like to go for a brightness of around say 75 for reaching around 170 nits for playing SDR games in a room with some ambient lighting. And then contrast and brightness, just leave them as they are. And then with the gamma, I would go for BT8086. And 2.4 and BT8086 are similar on an OLED with zero candelas per square meter black. You know, it will always approximate 2.4 power gamma, but just select BT8086 because it is technically more correct and it sounds cooler as well. And with black level, you know, we'll leave it at auto and I'll show you later on, you know, how auto interacts with the automatic RGB range on the PS5 console. And motion eye care off and then if we can go into color, color depth, leave it at 55. That is the most accurate according to my measurements on the LG C1 OLED. And with white balance, what we want to do is to drag it all the way down to warm 50 and this will provide the most accurate grayscale or color temperature, which is closest to the D65 white point used within the film and broadcast and increasingly gaming industry. And if we can get out from here, we will go into clarity and adjust sharpness. We will drag it all the way to zero. This will engage neutral sharpening. Neutral sharpening means that you know the TV is not going to be applying any further edge enhancement to the picture so you won't get any additional aliasing with jagged lines you know in games. And what we are going to do next is to go to the HDR side of things. So if I can get up from Fortnite here and then maybe start Ratchet and Clank and then this will engage the HDR output from the console because this is an HDR game. And then what we're going to do is to again go through the game optimizer settings because you know we have adjusted the settings for SDR but not HDR yet. So with brightness, you know, we'll go for 100, 150, which is correct for the most accurate tool mapping from black to the panel peak of this LG C1 OLED. With HDR tool mapping, I would prefer HDRG almost all the time. The reason why we use HDRG is because you know it will ask the TV to hard clip at its panel peak. And by doing that, you know you prevent double tool mapping. So let's say if you actually you know use HDR tool mapping on or off the console will be outputting certain kind of uh, tone map, but the TV will also be applying its tone mapping on top, creating sort of a double tone mapping phenomenon, which is undesirable because that means that you know you are actually reducing the effectiveness of the HDR presentation. So HDRG is very helpful not only for HDRG compliant games such as Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, but also any game that has an in-game brightness slider. That means that you know if you set the brightness slider to around 800 nits with HIG engage on an LG C1 OLED, the game will be output to 800 nits and then the TV will not perform any additional tone mapping on top. So this prevents double tone mapping. So with HIG engage, what we'll do is to just 
leave black level at auto and I'll go into the color sub menu. Color Def 55 is again, you know, correct for HDR content in game optimizer mode on the LG C1 and G1. And with white balance, again, I want to change color temperature all the way down to warm 50 because I just cannot stand a bluer color temperature. I'm so used to the correct hue of D65 white point. And this will be more accurate to the creator's intent as well. And then if we can get out from here and with the clarity, it will drop sharpness all the way to zero, again, to avoid applying any additional edge enhancement. And if you are thinking, you know, sometimes why am I so slow to <laughs> change or click on certain settings because you know I'm standing so close it's too big and that's the reason. So with that out of the way what I want to do now is to show you you know the correct PS5 settings in conjunction with these settings on the TV. So if we can go into screen and video resolution just leave them automatic automatic on when supported is technically the correct setting because of what this will do is to ask the PS5 to output SDR games as SDR and HDR games as HDR. This will preserve the artistic intent of the game. You don't really want an SDR game to be forced to HDR because that's not what the game developers have designed the game for. And with adjust HDR, this is important for us to set the HDIG parameters correctly. I'll go into that later, but I just wanted to show you that deep color output should be set to automatic. RGB range should be set to automatic. Again, I know I will explore this later. And then enable 120 hertz output should be set to automatic for a true HDMI 2.1 television, such as the LG C1. So let's go into adjust HDR and I'll have to close the game before you know it lets me proceed. And the way to set this is, I think you know I can go on and on and try and explain all this, but I've done a previous video explaining how to set these three parameters. And even then, you know, some of you already complained that that video is too long. So I'll cut to the chase. The first screen is to set the maximum full frame to matte luminance or max FFTML. The way to do it is to just go all the way down to the darkest. You can't go any darker and then, you know, just click upwards by 14 clicks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This will hard clip and correspond to slightly more than 800 nits. Oh, before doing that, you know, I wanted to actually show you that, you know, if we make sure that HGIG needs to be engaged you know it is imperative for hdrg to be engaged for this to work correctly so let's say if you set hdr tone mapping to off or on you can see that you know it is no longer hard clipping because you know the tv is performing additional tone mapping on top of the tone map output that is being sent out by the PS5 console, which defeats the entire purpose of setting the screen. So you need to select HGIG for this screen to work correctly. And again, I've set it correctly, I think. But you know, if we go down all the way and go up by 14 clicks for the second screen, this will set the maximum tone map luminance or max TML. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then with the third screen, this will set the minimum tone map luminance or min TML, you know, just go all the way down to zero, the darkest possible, so that, you know, you get the inkiest blacks possible for HRG compliant games. And with that out of the way, I also wanted to explain to you why my RGB range of choice is automatic rather than limited or full. So there is a school of thought that says that, you know, RGB range should be set to limited and then black level should be set to limited on the TV. But you have to understand that games on the PS5 in 60 frames per second is natively output in full range. So for example, let's say if I select automatic, and then I change to full, you can see that there's no change whatsoever because you know it is natively output in full range, which is 0 to 255. 
Now, if you set this to limited, then what you'll be doing is to ask the PS5 console to convert it from 0 to 255 to 16 to 235, which is the limited range. Now, I think, you know, in theory, there shouldn't be too much difference, but I'm a stickler for the smallest detail. And I have actually used my Canon reference monitor with an inbuilt HDR analysis toolkit to measure the effects of limited versus full, you know, from the PS5. And you can see that, let's say if I set it to full, get into the adjust HDR screen. And if I can go to the last screen, and you can see that with RGB range set to full, every single click increases in equal increments. So 000, 10, 10, 10, 20, 20, 20, 30, 30, 30, 40, 40, 40. So it goes up by 10 RGB code values with each click. But let's say if I get out from here and go into the RGB range control and change it to limited, this will be doing some sort of conversion. And then, you know, if we go into adjust HDR again, go to the third screen. Now you can see that with every click, you know, it is not even in terms of the increase in the RGB code value. So you start with 000, and then the next click up is 999, and then the next click up is 2020, 20, 20, and there will be some unevenness at some point. It doesn't go up in tens like what happens with RGB full range. And the reason is because the native output of the PS5 console is full range. So when you're asking it to output in a limited manner, there will be some conversion going on. And with all conversions, there might be some errors here and there. And even though it is a small error here, it may be amplified further down the video chain, which is why I like to preserve full range output where possible from the PS5. And the reason why I don't actually use full range and then set black level to full on the TV is because the PS5 has an HDMI 2.1 bandwidth limitation of 32 gigabits per second. What this means is that, you know, when you play 60 frames per second games, it will be output as RGB. But if you play 120 frames per second games with UHD resolution, it will only be output at YCBCR 422. And YCBCR is always limited. So it is always going to be 16 to 235 in the 8-bit SDR domain. So if you use you know, RGB range full, and then you set black level to high, but you know, you play 120 frames per second game from the PS5, there will be a black level mismatch between the TV and the PS5 causing, you know, elevated blacks or just a washed out picture. So that is not desirable. The best way to do it properly is to set RGB range to automatic and then set your TV your LG C1 or any TV with an automatic black level to use black level auto. So that means that when the console is outputting limited range, the TV will be using limited range. When the console is outputting full range, the TV will be using full range. So hopefully that makes it quite clear. Before I conclude, I also want to show you very quickly the new game optimizer mode. So if I can press just the cogwheel button again, this will bring up the game dashboard and then click on game optimizer. And for the most accurate tool mapping, for the most accurate picture, you should set game genre to standard, black stabilizer to 10, white stabilizer to 10. This will ensure the most accurate tone mapping, the most accurate picture. OLED Motion Pro, you should leave it off. You know, you can choose to engage it for higher motion clarity if you are one of those who like BFI or black frame insertion, but it decreases peak brightness by too much in HDR, so I don't generally use it. With prevent input lag, my personal preference is boost because you know not only you achieve a lower input lag of less than 10 milliseconds, Whereas, you know, if you use standard, then, you know, the input lag will be 13 milliseconds. And how LG has managed to reduce the input lag even further with boost mode is that, you know, it is treating 60 frames per second video signal as 120 frames per second. Basically, the TV is doubling the frames so that, you know, you achieve a lower input lag. And on measuring the latest firmware, R3.15.27, with this boost mode, I also found that 
you know, engaging boost mode actually brighten the near black gamma. Now you may think that this is a bad thing, but you know, it is actually quite helpful on LG's 2021 OLEDs because you know, out of the box, they are generally quite darken in the near blacks, which is why, you know, in side by side comparisons with Sony OLEDs, 2021 models, many of you have complained that, you know, the LG always looked darker in the shadow regions. They always crush a bit of blacks, crush a bit of shadow detail, whereas the Sony OLEDs generally have clearer shadow detail. And the reason is because LG has, for some reason, designed its near black gamma to be darker than reference, you know, out of the box for most of their 2021 OLEDs. And, you know, surprisingly, if you engage boost mode, you know, this will counteract the effect and make near black shadow detail look clearer and closer to reference. So I would engage boost mode if possible. Game dashboard, just leave it on. And then AI game sound, VR, G-Sync, I'll leave it on. And AMD FreeSync Premium, you know, there's no reason to leave it on in theory because, you know, the PS5 doesn't support AMD FreeSync Premium and it also doesn't support VRR yet. But, you know, I don't think there's any downside to leaving this on because, you know, LG has done a lot of things recently and they've managed to reconcile this with Dolby Vision so you can actually get Dolby Vision support with this as well. And I know the PS5 is not compatible with Dolby Vision, but let's say, you know, if you're one of those who just like plug other devices into the same HDMI input, or let's say you have a receiver that goes into one HDMI input, then just leave this on. I don't think there's any detriment anymore. And then with menu color, you know, violet is my favorite, but you know, you can choose to go wild with orange or green as well. If you'd like to watch more videos on 2021 LG OLEDs, I've created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it and I will see you in the next video. This video is sponsored by Omaze.